I've had people ask me before, where did you get all those perfect rocks? And my answer is I made them. Here, this this is kind of an interesting picture. Uh, can can you get a shot of it? Yeah, there you go. That's me when I first came down in this holler. I don't know. That's about seventy four. It was kind of a counterculture movement back then. That you know, back to the land and simplify. You know, what was the old? Was it the Kinks? Had that song, life is complicated, life is overrated, gotta get away from this complicated life. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that log down right there and drag it over to where I'm building my house and I'm gonna use it in my house. I'm gonna walk over here to it. You know, that's about six feet, okay? Right there. So you go back over here you go like this from the ground to the mark, and that's six feet, okay? So you go one, two, three, four. There's about 24 foot of log in that tree. I've got a book upstairs. It's called Ain't No Easy Way. And that's kind of been a philosophy of mine because it seems like every time it gets real easy, you better start waking. It's a wake up call. <laughs> you know, everything's got a hidden price, so. Well, I had a burnout, lost a cabin. Then I got in a squabble with the law enforcement and ended up shooting a helicopter. And then I got in an argument with my father in law and ended up shooting me in the leg. And I guess those are the major ones. <laughs> yeah, when I had to go in an emergency room for my leg injury, um, Dr. Rick McNair was the attending physician. And through the course of passage of time there, I was getting all these statements and you know, from five or six different entities. I got bored one night and opened up and started looking through it just for, out of curiosity. And one of the first ones I opened up was a little personal letter from Dr. McNair. And he was re made a request that if I was interested in it, uh, he would like for me to find him a piece of property out here and build him a, a custom log house. So I'm gonna open this rascal up. I've got my own key. I had to apologize to him because it was like three or four months old. <laughs> I said, Rick, I just opened up this letter from you and I didn't realize it was gonna be a personal letter from you. I thought it was another statement from the clinic. It said, yes, I'll definitely, I'm definitely interested. You know, we've shown you some log cabins on Five Outdoors before, but none of them compared to the one that you're about to see. Now this cabin under construction proves that old time Ozark craftsmanship is alive and well in Northwest Arkansas. It was obvious from first glance at the job site that this wasn't your usual run of the mill log cabin. And it was also clear that builder Robert Runyon uses tools and techniques that haven't been employed in the Ozarks for generations. Our, our work crew was the first ones that really started doing that. And everybody's going, man, Where'd y'all figure this out? And I said, well, heck, that's, that's how they used to do it. Well, most of the techniques on this house are uh, five, 600 year old or even older techniques from uh, Europe. This structure is, is 
quite animated. Uh, it's uh, everywhere you look, it's something a little different. And it's moving, visually moving. You know, the lines. Uh, there's nothing individually that's straight and square. It's just, it's all natural elements. When I built this house, I made sure we went to bedrock. I think you could pull a, you could have an elephant in here and not vibrate the floor. Well, I look at this and I, I see something that's probably going to be here literally for hundreds of years. That was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite books that I've got in the house is called Agony and Ecstasy, and it's a biography of Michelangelo, and that's what the old ancient stone carvers and cutters did. They trained themselves to blink every time they'd hit their chisel with a hammer. One day I had to fish a piece of steel out of a guy's eye. I took a needle and flipped it out of there. It was just a little old sliver. He didn't blink. I, got, I learned quite a bit from working for some good architects uh, who were associated with Faye Jones or went through his office, who were basically uh, protégés of, uh, or students of uh, Frank, the Frank Lloyd Wright School, where, where when you're building, you try to blend, you know, the building or, that you're doing into the natural landscapes. And so that's, it's, been a, it's been a long, long educational process. I first started doing stonework. I don't know, I might have been 24, 25 years old, and I was looking around, and I, I was trying to figure out why I couldn't, I didn't see any older, old stonemasons. Well, I know why now. They're wore out. <laughs> They've done some work. I haven't been easy on them, I'll put it that way. Well, you know, we're all mortal. We've got a limited time here on this earth, which is a snap of the finger, really, in the long term of it all. And it's, it's a satisfying feeling to build something that several hundred years from now, there will still at least be remnants of it. It's kind of like going out in the woods and finding an old foundation 200 years old out in the middle of the Ozarks, and you, it starts your thought process. Well, who lived here, and what did they do? And, how many kids do they have? And I, I think a lot about those type of things. And I like having a hand and, and uh, having a little bit of input in, into it, you know, by building stuff that uh, people will be intrigued about.